Hypothesis testing with difference of two means can seem very difficult due to the formulas. However, I promise you that after we solve an exercise, it will be crystal clear to you how to solve these exercises. So first, let's look at the two formulas we need to use. First, we have a formula for the degrees of freedom and then one for the calculated t value. Okay, they look difficult, but don't worry, it'll be simple once we go through them. First, let's read this exercise. For a random sample of 22 graduate managers, the mean number of job changes before joining the current firm was 1.91, with a standard deviation of 1.32. For a random sample of 20 non-graduate managers, the mean number of job changes before joining their current firm was 1.2, with a standard deviation of 0 0.7. Address the question of whether graduates have a different number of previous jobs to non-graduates at a 5% significance level. Okay, so the first thing to do, like any hypothesis testing problem, is that I recommend to write down the information we can gather from the question. So, first we have the first sample, which is the graduate managers. So the first sample size is 22. The first mean number of jobs, so x bar 1, so the first mean is 1.91, and the first standard deviation, s1, is 1.32. The second sample size, so the sample of non-graduate managers, is 20. The second mean number of jobs is 1.2, and the second standard deviation is 0.7. Okay, now that we know this, let's take the nil and alternative hypotheses. Notice the question says, adjust the question whether graduates have a different number of previous jobs. So what we're assuming is that there isn't a difference. So that mu1 is equal to mu2. And then the alternative hypothesis is that we need to test whether there is a difference. So h1 is there is a difference. So mu1 is not equal to mu2. In other words, there is a difference. Okay, so here's a quick question for you guys. Are we going to use a z test or a t test in this case? Now we are indeed going to use a t test. I know I sort of gave this away with the formulas. However, what really tells us whether we need to use the z test or the t test is the sample size. As we can see in this case, the sample size is lower than 30, which tells us that we need to use a t-test. If, on the other hand, the sample size was higher or equal to 30, then we know we need to use the z-test. Okay, excellent. So bear this in mind before always solving any of these exercises. Now, here's another question for you guys. Is this going to be a one-tail test or a two-tail test? So this is indeed going to be a two-tail test. Now let me draw this graph again, because that wasn't very good. So this is a two-tail test because as the alternative hypothesis says, we're saying it's different, but we don't know if it's higher or lower, okay? So it could either be higher or lower. So this is a two-tail test. Now the significance level is 5%, but because this is a two-tail test, so because we have two rejection regions, one on each side, the 5% is going to be split into two. So the significance level is 5% divided by two, which is 2.5% or 0 0.025 on the right hand side and also on the left hand side. And then the acceptance region, so the one that isn't shaded, is what's left. So 95%. Excellent. The next thing we need to do is to find out the critical t-value. This is the value at which the shaded regions start, and it's going to be crucial in order to know whether to reject H or not. Okay, so for this, we need to use the first formula, the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom is equal to the first sample standard deviation, so 1.32 squared over the first sample size, and we open brackets, by the way, plus the second standard deviation squared over the second sample size, close brackets, squared, 
over again the first standard deviation 1.32 squared over the first sample size 22 we square the whole thing this time over the first sample size minus 1 and we do the same thing for the second sample so 0 0.7 squared over 20 the whole thing squared over sample size minus 1 now you need to plug this into your calculator I've already done it to save some time but this should give you about 32.55 which if we approximate to the nearest whole number we get 33 okay so 33 degrees of freedom okay so be careful because the most common error with students with you know difference of two means is making a mistake using the formulas because as you can see there's so many brackets so many squared terms so be careful when you plug this into your calculator yeah be careful not to make a mistake okay so now we know the degrees of freedom therefore we turn to the t table because this is a t test so the t value we're trying to find is t at 33 degrees of freedom and a significance level of 0 0.025 so in this table as you can see the first uh, row is the significance level okay and then the first column is the degrees of freedom so we're look we're looking for 0 0.025 so 2.5 percent which is here and then we need to go down at our corresponding degrees of freedom so we go down and as you can see it stops at 30 okay now it stops at 30 because after 30 we can approximate it the we can approximate the value to this value okay so we can use 2.04227 okay which is approximately 2.04 okay so this is our t critical value excellent so now that, and by the way we can use this for plus or minus okay same as the z test so looking at our graph 2.04 is going to be on the right hand side and then on the left hand side we have minus 2.04 so now we know where the shaded regions start okay now that we know this we need to find the calculated t value and this is going to tell us whether we can reject ho or if we have to accept it and that's going to depend whether it's inside the rejection region or not for this we need to use the second formula now as you can see we have this term here mu1 minus mu2 you know and students always say oh but how do i find this it doesn't say this in the question okay the way you find this is by looking at the nil hypotheses as you can see the nil hypothesis is an equality saying that mu1 is equal to mu2 because this is an equality we can rearrange it we can say that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero okay the equality still holds this is the same thing as this so this is very valuable information we can say that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero and as you can see it means that we know that this term is zero so it really simplifies our life so now that we know this and you can do this at the beginning of the exercise by the way now that, we use, now that we know this, let's use the second formula. So the calculated t-value is equal to the first sample mean, so 1.91 minus the second, over the square root of the first standard deviation squared over the first sample size, plus the second standard deviation squared over the second sample size, and the whole thing square rooted. If you solve this, you should get 0 0.71 over 0 0.322, which is approximately 2.205. And by the way, I didn't specify this, but from the formula, right, we know that the first sample mean minus that second sample mean, and then we should follow up by saying minus, right, mu1 minus mu2, but we know this is zero which is why I didn't write it, okay? Because we, could, we can just ignore this. 
Okay, so our calculated t-value is 2.205. Let's try and locate this on the graph. As you can see, 2.205 is bigger than 2.04, which means that this value is located inside the rejection region. Therefore, because it's inside the rejection region, we reject HO. Now, if we put this into words, when the question says, address the question of whether graduates have a different number of previous jobs, then because we reject HO, that there is no difference, then we can conclude that there is a difference. In other words, we reject HO, so we know H1 is true. Therefore, we can see that mu1 is not equal to, to mu2. So there is a difference in the number of previous jobs of graduates to non-graduates. Okay. So there is a difference. Okay. So that's it for this exercise. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them.